H&M is the second largest global clothing retailer in the world, right behind Inditex, the company that owns Zara. In 2023, H&M had a revenue of $22.6 billion. That's more money than the whole GDP of Jamaica. They have over 4,800 stores worldwide and employing over 100,000 people. H&M changed the world's perspective on fashion. Today, we are taking a closer look at H&M. We will explore how H&M went from humble beginnings in Sweden to become a global fashion powerhouse, how they built their fashion empire and what are their business strategies. If you're interested in business, you are at the right place. Let's start with the unbelievable beginnings of H&M. Young Swedish guy named Erling Persson went to USA after World War II. He saw some clothing stores making tons of money and decided to open one in his home country. In 1947, he accomplished his dream and opened a store in this city, which I can pronounce. Erling named the store Hennes, which means hers in Swedish. In 1964, he opened another store in Norway. Two years later, he acquired a hunting shop called Maurits Whitforce in Stockholm. Erling threw out everything except men's clothing and combined it with his women's clothing. He changed the name to Hennes and Maurits, or in short, H&M. They went public on the Stockholm Stock Exchange and raised some money for their expansion in 1974. Two years later, they started to expand all across Europe, opening their first store in England. This was only the beginning. In the clothing business, the competition is insane. You really need to stand out. What did H&M do to stand out? When the internet started to get popular, in 1997, H&M.com was registered. Simply said, H&M was starting to sell online. That move and rising popularity gave them the ability to open their first store in the USA in the year 2000. What's interesting is that they opened that store in Fifth Avenue, New York City, an avenue which was dominated by luxury brand stores. Let's be honest, the main reason for H&M's success is fast fashion business model. We made two videos on this topic. In one, we went deep and covered the entire fast fashion industry. By the way, that video was filmed over a year ago. I had some fat and bad color grading. And the other video was about Shein, a company that uses ultra fast fashion business model. Check out these videos after this video. In short, fast fashion is replicating recent cutwalk trends and high fashion designs for cheap and bringing them into retail fast. All this process from designing to putting the items on the shelves last less than three weeks. Many companies are using fast fashion model, but are not even close to being successful like H&M. So there must be more. H&M decided to go to another industry. In 2008, they decided to sell home furnishings. At the start of this business move, they sold it only online. It was so successful that H&M opened H&M home stores which are now available in 447 stores worldwide. They also opened and acquired some brands like Kos, Weekday, Monkey, Arcade, Aphon, A Cheap Monday. These stores were launched to reach other audiences. Kos, for example, is a modern minimalist design for men and women. Kos has over 190 stores in more than 30 countries. And some other brands they were acquired were to cover their Asian market. But a unique move that nobody else has done before made people talk about H&M. In 2004, some stores were seeing huge amounts of people. That's because H&M launched an exclusive collection designed by the famous designer, Karl Lagerfeld. If you don't know who that is, let me tell you, his stuff is not cheap as H&M's. The collection H&M launched sold out in less than an hour. H&M continued this move to collaborate with famous luxury designers. Some of them are Versace, Balmain, Roberto Cavalli, and many more. Except great business moves and trendy clothes, H&M is famous for its controversies. And it gets really dark. H&M is full of controversies. It's really hard to cover them all. So we will just cover some. We don't want to make this video too long. Write me in the comments if you want us to make a video about H&M's dark business. Maybe the most famous controversy is the child minority scandal. They had a hoodie that said coolest monkey in the jungle and a black kid as a model. The public was in outrage. I'm sure they didn't mean no harm. I don't understand how the design and marketing team thought this would be a good idea. That's not the only racism controversy. H&M's Africa division was accused of racism due to diversity. They lacked black models. In 2013, there were allegations that H&M exploited adult and child forced labor in Uzbekistan. 
Seven years later, in 2020, they were accused of using forced Uyghur labor in China's region of Xinjiang. Uyghurs are a minority in China. Since 2014, China's government has committed human rights abuses against them, putting them into labor camps and many dark things. H&M said that they ended their partnership with the company that exploited the minority. In H&M's statement, they said that they are not going to use cotton produced in that region. As an answer, China decided to remove H&M from their internet. These are just few of the controversies of H&M. There is a full list of them on Wikipedia. If you would put it on A4 paper, it would need a few papers. But H&M does something to build their brand image and to make their business better. Fast fashion is famous for destroying the environment. Producing tons of clothes that you will wear only one season and then throwing it away makes tons of waste that is dangerous for the environment. H&M advocates for sustainable fashion. In 2013, they launched vouchers. You would bring your own clothes and get a voucher. These clothes would be recycled with the goal to create a zero-waste economy. Year after that, they would change their supply chain to avoid endangered forests. In 2021, they launched a rental program in which men could borrow suits for 24 hours for a job interview. In the same year, they teamed up with the Game of Thrones actress Maisie Williams and Game Animal Crossing to teach people the benefits of recycling. H&M plans by 2030 to use only recycled materials. This is not the only business model to build their brand image. They also do a lot of philanthropy. In 2014, they launched a foundation with the goal to improve humanitarian and environmental issues within the fashion industry. The person family that is the majority owner of H&M donated $180 million to the foundation. Green Machine was their first project, a technology that will be able to recycle clothes in the same way aluminum cans are recycled. The foundation announced that they will give $1 million to a person who will solve the problem of producing clothes without damaging the planet. Not only that, they support young designers. The foundation has an award giving designers $50,000 and a year of mentorship from H&M. H&M is the second largest global clothing retailer in the world. Last year, they had a revenue of $22.6 billion. Together with Zara, they changed how people view fashion. The reason for success is the ability to offer trendy fashion at affordable prices appealing to a broad range of customers. Selling everyday clothes to everyday people is hard. H&M's biggest market is in the USA and Germany. Mondays and Thursdays are the best to shop at H&M because the stores are scheduled to receive new clothes these days. In 2021, 32% of the sales came from online stores, and they closed some stores because of the pandemic. In the present, H&M is switching to environmental-friendly and online sales. How will that work out in the future? We will see.